Short bowel and styla failure is a devastating condition, and without home TPN, patients would not survive. The problem is that the quality of life is severely impaired because patients are dependent on IV infusions every single night. Furthermore, you've got a catheter in the right side of the heart which is abnormal, and it can produce thrombosis and infections. And therefore, complications often mean patients have to return to hospital frequently. Consequently, anything that can reduce the dependency on IV infusions um, would represent a major advance in their management. An interesting observation was that a patient with um, a tumor which involved um, GLP-2 production from the small bowel um, developed massive hyperplasia of the remaining bowel very similar to what is seen in the natural adaptation process to short bowel syndrome. And this raised the intriguing possibility of developing a drug that is specific for enhancing adaptation, hence toduclotide. This paper is entitled Safety and Efficacy of Toduclotide After 52 Weeks of Treatment in Patients with Short Bowel and Intestinal Failure. Patients with short bowel and intestinal failure are not that common. And so therefore, to get sufficient numbers, we had to enroll people not only in U.S. centers, but also around the world, and particularly in Europe. The study design consisted of selecting eligible subjects who had to be at least one year out of surgery and dependent on at least three infusions of TPN weekly. We had to um, make sure that the fluid requirements they were given were were exactly right. We maintain a normal urine output. And so therefore fluid balance depends upon maintaining renal function. And the baseline of the whole study is to maintain a urine output of between one and two liters per, per day. And you can see that if you increase absorption, urine output is going to increase. And so therefore what you do then is to cut down on IVs, to cut down urine, to maintain balance all the way through the period. They were randomized into a six-month uh, randomized controlled trial against placebo and then divided into two dose levels, high and a low dose level of toduclotide. Periodically through the six-month period, every month urine output was rechecked and if it was increased, then PN was cut back appropriately. And at the end of the six-month period, the patients, in, interestingly, in the low-dose group uh, had the best response. 46% of them actually achieved a 20% reduction in IV fluid requirements. They were then allowed to enter a six-month extension study uh, where they were continued on the same dose of toduclotide. Those on placebo were not included. The results were fascinating. The benefits seen in the first six months were not only continued, but it appeared, appeared to improve progressively over the six-month period. The lower dose level, 0.05 milligrams per kilogram per day, was more effective, was most effective in reducing IV fluid requirements. This translated into um, an increase in the number of patients achieving a greater than 20% reduction in IV fluid infusions from 46% at six months to 68% at the end of the 52-week period. 68% of patients were able to cut out one night of IV infusion every week and translated into a reduction in total IV f fluid uh, infusion rates on average five liters per week. Patients tolerated the injections very well and really the m only complaints of significance were usually associated with abdominal discomfort. And this can be explained by the therapeutic effect of the, gut, uh, of the drug in increasing gut size. Toduclotide is clearly effective in reducing IV fluid requirements in patients with adapted short bowel syndrome dependent on home TPN. It is a new form of therapy. It's a new line of therapy. And um, further long-term studies are needed to fully ex uh, assess its safety and efficacy long-term.